Hi, everyone. Today's guest on Compassion in Action, we're honored to speak with the always amazing Miyoko Schenner. She's the author of five vegan cookbooks, a singer, a writer, a chef, and founder of the Rancho Compassion Rescue, and always an ardent advocate for animals. She calls herself an Epicurean activist who is out to end cruelty to animals and climate change, as well as by connecting our palate to our future. Welcome, Miyoko, and thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Victoria. Hello, everybody. Happy holidays. Can you tell us a bit about Rancho Compassion, uh, Miyoko? What would li I'd like to know what moved you to create that rescue, and why did you choose to rescue farmed animals? Well, I started Rancho Compassion uh, eight years ago here out. We're in West Marin in California. And um, initially it was because it happened by chance. A couple of goats arrived. Someone asked me to take some goats in and I did. And then someone said, well, there are these three little pigs that need saving. And then it just kind of went from there. Um, I don't, we don't really call ourselves a rescue. And in fact, our mission has sort of begun to splinter from the idea of just rescuing animals. I came to the realization last year, or this year actually, that there are billions of animals to be saved and there's no way that sanctuaries can save farmed animals. And I realized that the most effective way uh, to stop animal agriculture was to change hearts and minds. So we launched a, uh, an ed a youth education program. And currently we have about 50 kids a week coming to the sanctuary uh, to commune with animals, to understand that they are their friends, and then to get their hands in the soil in our new compassionate education garden, uh, to grow vegetables, to learn where their food comes from. And it is this entire cycle of learning about animals as individuals and a garden as a place to grow food and to connect with with our food system to learn that we can actually grow our food, that food does not come in a package from the store. Um, and I believe that if we can really embrace children and harness the powers that they have within themselves to understand compassion, because they do at a very young age, and we can empower them to understand that they can be actual uh, agents of their own food system, then we can really begin to tackle the problem ahead of us in creating the need to create a compassionate food system. Um, and so we really pivoted to education. And of course, we did just take in two more pigs from the La Haina fa uh, fires, two little piglets that were born the day after a fire ravaged uh, a pig farm. The mother pig, Mud Pie, went into the pond and saved herself. And the next day she gave birth to a litter of pigs. And uh, the farmer decided not to go back into farming. Um, and there were 45 pigs that needed rescuing. So we took two little piglets. Um, so yes, we, we will rescue once in a while when appropriate. Uh, but we are really focusing on uh, an education program that we are currently building um, we have students coming from all walks of life. We have students uh, from a school that deals with disabled and uh, kids on a spectrum. Um, we have school a school that deals with at risk youth. Mm -hmm. um, and so and we also have little elementary school kids coming and high schoolers. So we've got kids from sort of all backgrounds, all wa walks of life. And the idea is let's open up their hearts because they are, the generation that will lead the world tomorrow. Um, and so that's really what we're focusing on right now is away from rescue. We don't call it, we're a farmed animal sanctuary, but we've really pivoted. So we're not just a sanctuary for animals, we're a sanctuary for people where they also can find peace when they come here. I love that. And I agree, children are the future and they educating them while they're young is so terrifically important. On your website, uh, you mentioned there was a great line about people finding themselves at yes. the sanctuary as well. Can you talk a little bit more about that for adults as well? Yes, it's really interesting. Um, I am very critical and about uh, where philanthropy and animal rights is going today. It's going more away from animals and activism and more towards activism that, that creates uh, capitalism. I call it captivism. 
So I'm, uh, but one of the organizations that's really pushing for this, the Effective Altruists, actually did a study of 5,000 vegans and vegetarians. And they asked them, well, what were your initial reasons for transitioning away from animal foods? And the, the primary reason was personal conversations. But number two, and I believe number four, were animal interactions. And so connecting people with animals is a way for them to under, to discover their own compassion, to discover who they truly were before they were mm -hmm. indoctrinated in this capitalist society where we uh, we uh, we uh, numb people from the ability to love and to have compassion, um, where we honor success and monetary achievements over our ability to love others and to take care of others, uh, which includes animals as well. Um, and so I believe that is, this is a place, a sanctuary is a place where you can find yourself and you can find yourself when you open yourselves up to others. And others means not only a human community, but animals as well. I could listen to you talk all day. I mean, God, that's beautiful. I wanted to ask you one question. You have a long and ongoing history for doing so much good for animals, and so much of it is broad reaching. Do you reach for causes like the one you've just been speaking of that have the broadest effect, or do, do you just respond to issues that happen to come your way? Um, you know, it really depends. I mean, I am out there uh, promoting, for a long time, I really tried to solve the problem of animal agriculture through producing uh, vegan products, because I thought, okay, all we have to do is replace what's being sold and that will solve the problem. I don't believe that anymore. I believe the way we tackle animal agriculture and is ultimately changing ourselves. It is not about stopping a practice. We are on this earth to evolve as human beings and to discover our own humanity. That has been the same cause for thousands of years, whether you look at it from a Christian angle or a Buddhist angle, it doesn't matter. It is all about our own human evolution. How do we evolve into better, more compassionate human beings? And if we don't get back to that, to working on ourselves, nothing in the world will ever change. We will be the same place tomorrow as we were yesterday. If we don't do as individuals, the hard work. And I believe that the way we do that is by creating community, by creating safe places, sanctuaries, not just for animals, but for people, um, communities where we work together to work on ourselves and to work on the problems of the world. And we cannot do it alone. And we are forever evolving away from community and we're, we we are now living these sort of isolated individual lives where we're relating to our screens or, or our jobs or whatever. And we need to get back to the table. We need to get back to the table and break bread with our families, with our friends, with our community, whether they're vegan or not, invite them to your table, a warm setting where you can break bread together and share warm conversation. And, and this, when we are a part of something, then we're bigger than ourselves. And this is how we can work on ourselves and change the world. So uh, that is really my interest, whatever it, however professionally I evolve in the future, it will have to be about somehow building community. Can I ask you an article on the Veg Economist about maybe we're not producing uh, the it's not that we're failing in our products, that we're not producing the right products for the right audience. How do you segue that need for community into producing products that will appeal to somebody who is considering the change? Well, we do need products. I'm not in denial of that. I mean, because it does help people go vegan easier. I mean, I went vegan 40 years ago when there was nothing available and that was okay for me. But for a lot of people, it's just a lot easier to go into the store and buy something. Um, but the article that I wrote for Economist was just one little segment of a much larger picture. And it was, an, you know, Vegconomist is an economic newspaper, uh, and therefore I had to write a business article. And that mm -hmm. I was asked to write a business article, and I wanted to say, hey, we're not approaching this the right way. Making more burgers and nuggets will not save the world. 
But ultimately, I don't think it matters what products are sold. I mean, I do. I think that you have to have the right products for the right audience, which means you have to make the right products for early adopters. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the laggards and the late majority that are that uh, that we're making products for right now. We're not making the right products for the people that are interested in veganism right now. So that is something that we do have to switch. But that won't ultimately save animals until we as human beings come together as humanity and work together and have a sense of community and have a sense of and, and find joy in ourselves. I mean, I, one thing that I have to point out is there's a lot of lonely people in the world today. And lonely people don't have the capacity, they don't have the extra love that they can give. But if they can be nurtured, they can also nurture. So we we have to save animals, but we also have to save each other. And in doing so, we can save ourselves. You know, we forget um, that, it, that all animal problems are a people problem. Yes. That's a, that's a great reminder. One last question, and this is, uh, you inspire me. I know you inspire lots of people. Um, not only because of your compassion, but because of your personal courage. You've gone through some tough times, and yet you seem to bounce back more active and more positive than ever. Do you have any words of advice or wisdom for people who are recovering from challenges, whether they're based in animal activism or everyday life? Well, I don't have any wisdom. <laughs> and um, I can say that, you know, I, I fall into, just like everybody else, I fall into deep depression. And yet I have to show up in the world every single day. And I want to devote my life to somehow inspiring and helping others. And I, I want, it would be great if everybody could do that. I mean, it doesn't, you know, I, I get very, very depressed. I go through days of depression and then I have to get back up again. I have to pull myself back up and say, I have to show up in the world again and, and do something that will save animals, will create community. Um, I've had a lot of great people help me, people that have, I mean, the friends, you know, after everything I went through in the last year and a half, there's been an amazing community of people that have reached out to me, given me support, given me love. Um, and we all have to show up in the world for each other. Um, it's, you know, life isn't easy, but we have to remember that we are all on this, why are we here? We're all going through our own evolution to become better human beings. That's what we have to remember. Well, you are certainly a great example of that, Miyoko. And sincerely, thank you so much. I do believe you're wise, um, but you've given uh, us a lot to think about and a lot of fuel to move us all forward on our own journeys. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.